Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie, a show where we dive into some weird and wacky equipment and wonderful, call it whatever you want, music. I'm Andy from Two Round Robins, and I hope you're ready for a look into numbers, statistics, and music. Coming from a rather unscientific background, I was never really good at math or studies related to statistics, data or similar. However, I always look for fun, interesting and unique ways of generating sound and music. This is where the so-called data sonification comes into play. Much like data visualization, the auditory equivalent to this is presenting such things using sonification. So think of using real world facts, figures and statistic and converting sad numbers into generative algorithms, which do not only create a unique way of experiencing sound, but also add a certain real world meaning to the art piece itself. I can see myself digging into this in the coming months or in even years. But for now, I thought I'd give you a few Norn scripts that might give some basic overview into this particular scientific art form. Now, we have already touched upon some database scripts on this channel. I've talked and used Jonathan Snyder's Flora script extensively, although the bloody L system is still something I will have to touch upon in the future. I've also talked about Superlead and its Norse cousin Shixislead made by William Hazard, which also takes data in forms of words and poetry. There's also the script Fibonacci, which uses the Fibonacci sequence as its main point of generative material. But what I'll focus on today is going to be the wonderful world of data and meaning behind such numbers. So Duncan Gear, aka the Radio Edit Online, is a sonification artist and developer. Going through some of their scripts, I've noticed that Duncan contributes meaning to their script, basically creating a sort of an art piece in itself. And one of these is basically called PPM here, which basically is a single sign tone that reflects the concentration of CO2 in our atmosphere. So PPM or parts per million was one of the simplest scripts on the Norse platform. You have no controls whatsoever, and what you're stuck with is this simple sign drone. The strong point here being the frightening message. The tone and number here represents the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. And going by the screenshot on Norse community from 2022, the number was 419, now it's 424. Once the tone reaches a certain pitch, and currently is, it is at, I, I believe, somewhere around F3, and once this thing reaches C4, which is not a long stretch from now, we will most likely reach the threshold of severe climate impact on our environment. So yeah, this is again a very, very heavy script to process internally, but important nonetheless, as it's a simple tone that basically reminds us where we're at. The doom and gloom continues with the addition of loud number scripts, which is basically just data sonification with Norse. And this takes any CSV file and sonifies it. 
So here we have the default CSV file called temperature, which takes data from temperature anomalies from the 50s up until now. It takes this data from a CSV file from the Our World data site, where you can find lots of these particular files and put them into script, into this particular script, of course. You can, of course, put any custom data that you wish. And this is as simple as loading it into the folder through the network. So if we go to the params here, we go down here, we can basically change this script. So how this works is basically fairly simple. If you press K2, it will just, based on the scale, which you can change, and based on the root node, which you can change, it will move up and down through the graph. Now, by holding K1 and moving encoder 1, you basically change the column of the CSV file. But of course, the whole point here is basically to change the CSV files and put any data that you wish. So for example, I have put here the annual CO2 levels here. And as you can see, the graph changes. And the graph will also loop. Now going through that, you can also look at oil spills. So yeah, with this you get basic quite immediate results by just using numbers from let's say your Excel on or number file. An important note to, an important thing to actually note here is that the loud number script also has MIDI implementation, meaning that you can take these graphs and you can use these as MIDI controls to your MIDI devices or let's say any plugins on your computer. You can also use this for Crow, which will basically connect it to your um, modular gear. Also, a thing that I should notice here, uh, or at least tell you here, is basically this, that you can load any CSV files, but you really need to take care that it is a CSV file, so that it's comma separated. And so don't use any semicolons. I think I spent most of the day trying to figure out where <laughs> why some things didn't work here. But yeah, it's fairly simple and I should just read, um, well, not the manual, but like the description. Use a CSV file, always convert it to comma uh, separated file. So yeah, there you go. You have data, which you can basically quite easy, quite easily um, work on. So yeah, let's just move to the next one. A bit more on the lighter side of things is the UFO script. Let's put it up. So this script takes data from the position of the internal space station, so the ISS. Basically, it works by using the API from the where the ISS.at site and manipulates the synth engine based on the data of the station coordinates. Latitudes is mapped to the filter cutoff and modulation depth of the internal SuperSaw engine, which was developed by Jonathan Snyder. So by pressing K3, we can listen to that. So as I said, latitude is mapped to the filter cutoff and modulation depth, while longitude is basically mapped to the reverb absorption, as I understand it. And a cool thing here is also that the detune of the synth engine is based on the distance of the ISS and the coordinates, which you can freely change in the Lua file. So I went into the Lua file and changed the coordinates to something that's far nearer to me. So in this way, I kind of personalized the script and made it, made, let's say, a little connection with the lovely ISS here. 
So the drone that you're hearing, which you can change by the way, because if you go to the parameters, you can change different stuff here. But uh, which you can change and this drone basically changes itself every 19 minutes or so as the API on the site also changes. So yeah, quite lovely stuff. Another developer that also dived into data sonification is Mark Eats. And let's look at his overwintering script. Now this script takes quite a, some time to load, so let's just try to use this time for me to say a few things about the developer. Sadly, as I understand it, their script ARP index, where data is used based on livestock market feed, is currently not operational. I don't know why, maybe it has to do something to do with the site going down and stuff like that. However, one of the more beautiful scripts for Norse is their overwintering script. So what you're basically hearing are chords generated by data clusters that are based on bird migration patterns. Data can be found on your bird portal, which basically shows the reported sighting of different bird species. Mark decided to focus on three of these species. So we have the common crane, we have the white stork, and we have the roof. So each species has a different migration pattern and of as well as a different sound engine. So it just like each of these has a different feel to them, which I find quite fascinating. So the script here is quite bare with its controls. If we move the uh, uh, encoder free, we can change the density. So because we're moving in time and as well as we can see how the bird migration went. And I just find this quite beautiful. So let's go back to roof. Oh, we also have the European turtle dove. So four species. And these sounds absolutely lovely. So even though the controls here are a bit bare, you can change the screen and what the screen shows you. These are basically chords that are being generated by the data clusters. Even though there are bare controls, I find using this with an audio mangler or a processor to be quite a great combination, as we have this lovely sounds from the data sonification in combination with something that you can control and perform with. So I really love that. So yeah, all in all, I think that data sonification is quite an amazing tool, which can use real world facts, figures and numbers in order to generate soundscapes and really home in the message along the way. We have, we have skimmed only a few of these lovely scripts. And there are of course other ways to sonify data than doing it through Norse platform. I might touch upon these in the future if there will be any interest from the community. So if you like this type of content, you can support the channel by becoming a Patreon, where you can get sample packs each month. You can also support me by buying my music off Bandcamp or simply subscribing to the channel. But as it surely helps a lot. But most importantly, by the way, is for you to have a great rest of your evening, morning or afternoon, whenever you might be watching this and do take care.